said I was dirty because I've said shit. Fuck. Well, to me, fuck is not dirty. Fuck is only dirty when you don't wash up. Now, believe that if there's any prudes here. I could say intercourse, but if you're doing it right, you fuck it. The following program is intended for mature audiences. I used to take drugs and I quit, but I'll tell you something. I have nothing against drugs whatsoever. That's kind of weird, huh? I never heard that one. Used to take drugs, quit, and have nothing against them. Wow, never heard that. Let's hear more. I'll tell you something else. I know this is not a very popular idea. You don't hear it very often anymore, but it's the truth. I have taken drugs before, and uh, I had a real good time. Looking at this head, it reminds me to go home and clean my dildo. <laughs> that's not true, mine's black. Oh, that's right, bitches, you know me. I bang a lot of black guys, that's my thing. That's right, son, yes, son. It ain't by choice, I just haven't lost enough weight to get a white guy to fuck me. That's the problem. You white devils with your skinny bitches, I gotta put up with that. I'm from very near Ferguson. Maybe you saw our travel brochure. Uh, people are like, really? Are you really from there? Yeah, I am. They're like, can you believe, can you believe all that happened? Yeah, I can. We kept a lid on that for 25 years. Every day I felt the tension. Every day. Even in high school, I came home and I said, I don't really know if our school is that safe anymore, Dad. A girl got stabbed to death in the third floor bathroom. He didn't even stop doing the crossword puzzle. He goes, well, don't use that bathroom. What are you, an idiot, Kathleen? Jesus Christ, use your mind. Welcome. I was gonna talk about this a while ago, but I didn't bring it up because I forgot. Surprise, motherfucker. For one. Two, I know this dude is sensitive, so I, I didn't want to hurt his feelings. But, you know. Look, I'm not gonna... It's, it's not bad. It's not bad. I just... I don't get it. And there's nothing wrong with that. I'm not saying that, you know, I, maybe I'm not supposed to get it. Maybe I'm not supposed to get it. I don't, I don't know. But what I'm getting at is I brought up Chris Gethard a while ago. I grew up in New Jersey in a neighborhood called Down the Hill. It was the tough part of town. I want to be very clear, I am not claiming that I am tough. I know that I look like a grown-up version of Calvin from Calvin and Hobbes. I am aware of it, I understand. But I did take the down-the-hill boys bus home from school. This was the bus with all the guys who grew up on the wrong side of the tracks in my hometown. Now, crazy things happen on this bus every day. One day I get on the bus and I'm immediately hit with a whole bunch of ice cubes. And I dive into a seat, I turn around, I realize what's happening is a few guys have gone to the supermarket and went to the freezer and got like the five pound bags of ice you get to fill a cooler or whatever. And every time someone new gets on the bus, they're just whipping ice at them. So I'm mad I got hit, but very quickly I'm like, ooh, who's the next son of a bitch? You know, like it was really fun. We're picking ice up off the ground, throwing at each other, total chaos. I'm pretty sure I mentioned it. I don't, I don't know. You can check the fucking backlogs and see if... I'm pretty, I mentioned it somewhere, I know I mentioned it somewhere, I don't, I don't know where, it could have been on the podcast, could have been on YouTube, could have been on Instagram, you gotta follow these things to keep up with what's going on, because I make it, and I can't, it's just what it is, but, you know, I'm, I'm here, so I don't get fined, and I'm watching Mark Marin's new special, End Times Fun. And I keep having a reoccurring thought in my mind. Now, I, I like Mark. I think he's a funny dude. I like his podcast. 
which if you're not aware, he recently did an episode with Brad Pitt and Leonardo DiCaprio, which was really fucking cool to listen to because to me, I'm just going to be perfectly honest, I thought those dudes were fucking weirdos before I heard it. Not because of any evidence that I had, I just assumed because they were actors that they were fucking weirdo guys. And they don't, it's only a podcast, only an hour conversation between three people, but they came off like cool, regular dudes, which is nice. I mean, not that my opinion matters for anything, but I, I like the idea that I enjoy movies that these guys are in, and then I, I hear them carry on a conversation, and they're just like regular people. And I understand they have more money than I'll ever have. You know what I mean? They do whatever the fuck they want. That's just what it is. But they've earned, they've earned that right. So, you know, but that's not, I'm not here to talk about them. I'm watching Mark's special. And don't get me wrong, there's bits in it that I like. I'm not saying that it's a bad special. When I'm sitting here... And I'm realizing, and this is going to sound really dumb, so, you know, get ready to type away on your keyboards. But uh, apparently, I, I guess I didn't notice this until now, that there are, like, just different, I don't even know what you would call it. Not, well, there's different brands of comedy, right? Like, it's this is gonna be difficult for me to explain because I'm gonna sound like a moron when I say it, but I'm I'm gonna try. So bear with me here. Mark's comedy is George Carlin ish, except not. Ah, oh, this is gonna sound so bad. But look, I like the dude. I'm not trying to say nothing bad. It it's not. It don't have. As many punchlines, I feel like. The way the Carlin set his up, it was, I'm gonna hit you with some real shit, but I'm gonna say it in a type of way that makes it funny. Then you have to kind of keep doing that, you know? So people will think it's something you do all the time. I do this all the time. It's the third stage of syphilis. And that's what Mark does, but he adds something to it that makes it, I feel like, a little bit more observational if that makes sense like he's he's just kind of sitting and telling he's like a weird hybrid between a, a storyteller type of comic was that uh bring stuff to life which is why you know really a silver tongue is somebody that can read a book and make the story come to life yeah kind of kind of like that because like he's he's putting it he's putting it out there in his own way but, you know, so that brought me back to Chris Gethard, which I watched his HBO special, which is probably a couple of years old now. And that is definitely, now, on the off chance that you hear this, don't, God, uh, like, uh, you know what? Fuck it. I've been, I've been depressed. I've been suicidal, I've cut myself up, so, you know, whatever. I'm just going to put it out there the only way that I know how, and that's no filter, no bullshit. And, you know, don't hear something I say and go debate on cut your fucking wrist open over it. Goodbye, cruel world. It, it's not worth all that. It's just an opinion. I'm not trying to take anything away from what you've achieved, what you're going to achieve. I want you to do well in life. I mean, for fuck's sake, dude. I can't stand mumble rap. I hate it. I hate grime music. Save your, save your letters, please. Because you're not going to... There's not one word that you can utter to me that is going to change my mind. I'm an old man at 34. I'm stuck in my ways, and that's just what it is. That's just what it is. But I'm okay with it. 
I understand I'm not going to be able to embrace every new thing that comes along. And I'm not supposed to. At some point in your life, I think you have to get with the vibe or just get off the ride altogether and understand that this is where about halfway through your life, things are going to change and you're going to get left behind. And the next generation is going to come up and it's going to be their time and your time has come and gone and they don't care about your time, you don't care about their time, and that's just what it is. But every once in a while, you can see each other at a, a small crossroads and acknowledge one another, and that's it. It doesn't have to be an ugly, venomous thing. But this, this Chris Gethard cat, the way that he puts out comedy... I dare say I don't even consider it stand-up comedy. Now, don't hear me wrong. There's a lot of people that will listen to what I do and say, how dare you? You're a hack. You take clips of other things and inject it into things that you say for quote-unquote comedic effect because... You're not smart enough to or be able, is, yeah, uh, or talented enough to actually write a joke or go do a set or get on stage or whatever, whatever it is that you want to say. I'm not funny. I'm not funny. I acknowledge the fact that I'm a bit of a hack, dude. I know it's a hacky thing to use props and all that. I'm the fucking carrot top of podcast. No disrespect to carrot top. I honestly have no idea what that guy does. Other than the fact that... He touches watermelon. Nope. That's Gallagher. Uh, <laughs> oh, he plays with a rubber chicken. Yeah, something like that. You know, a lot of guys have bashed that dude over the years. And I don't understand why you need that guy. Because he gives people who are not a fan of whatever you do an avenue for them to explore to see if they're into that. And th this is exactly why... I'm not intentionally shitting on Chris or Marin or any other comic you can name. Like, even Fortune Feimster, who is a great podcast guest, but her comedy just doesn't resonate with me. But I'm not her audience. We'll get to that part later on. But the way that this dude does comedy... To me, I don't consider it stand-up comedy. Because it's not in the traditional sense of what comedy is. Which is set-up punchline, allegedly. This is what I understand from listening to radio shows and podcasts where comedians talk about what it is they do. I.e. Bonfire, Jim and Sam, Fighter and the Kid... Bill Burr's Monday Morning Podcast. Yeah, no, nah, fighter and the the fighter and the kid because uh, Shab was was a fighter in the UFC before he before he did that. Which, by the way, I couldn't stand him for a while. I thought he was a fucking douchebag until I decided to just give in one day and really check out what the guy was about and I realized that what I was seeing from him was is what I think a lot of people see when they click on one thing that I do or several things in that category that I do where you you see the same energy about a certain thing. Hey, you're, shut up! You're man. spicy! And then you, you paint the picture in your mind and that's just who this person is. And it's not true. He's actually, again, he's another example. Chab is another example of a dude whose comedy is not necessarily for me. I can see why all of these people are successful and why people enjoy them. I just, I don't. 
not because I want to hate on it. It just if something is funny, it's funny. If it's not, it's not. One of the most iconic stand-up bits ever is Eddie Murphy's bit on Raw or Delirious about McDonald's hamburgers and his mom would make one put it on Wonder Bread or whatever the fuck and be like, eat that, it's the same thing. I remember arguing... Yeah. I remember arguing with a friend of mine about that because he was talking about how great it was and it's not that great. I remember it used to be great too. But then, you know... You went back and... have potato rolls and I was like, mmm, potato rolls are better. Well, I'm talking about the... Well, yeah. that's true, too, but I'm talking about the stand-up bit. That don't look like no McDonald's. About how, like, it wasn't... It Look, it was a product of its time, like a lot of well, things yeah, are. yeah, that's what was, you know... Because I grew up with homemade hamburgers. You know, my grand... Uh, the, the little hockey pucks. <laughs> yeah. I fucking hate those. Burn as a motherfucker. Hate those. This one thing I can't stand is a terribly structured or made burger, man. Hate it. The worst. Got no flavor to it at all. And I'm not even crazy. When I say flavor, the the biggest thing that I'm going to do is maybe put some bacon on it if I want to get crazy. Other than that, salt and pepper and that's it. I'm real plain guy. So when I say flavor, I just mean flavor of the meat. Those little hockey puck things, they don't, they're like just eating a, a charcoal. Uh, char- charcoal meat. Yeah, they're just like eating a piece of charcoal out of the grill when you're, when you're done cooking your meat. You throw the meat in the garbage and eat the charcoal instead. That's what it tastes like. I mean, you know, whatever. You, you learn things, you live and you learn things, you, when you can afford it, you buy better quality you know, meat like we did. Yeah. yeah like we spent today 20 something bucks on a 12 pack of Bubba burgers which is outrageous that they're sponsors, even but they can sponsor us yeah for real you can you can send some of those over here I wouldn't mind that but $24 for 12 burgers is wild now, I know what you're going to say. You can go to McDonald's and you could buy, like, I don't know, a cheeseburger value meal for probably 10 bucks. So that's not really that outrageous. But, it, I mean, it kind of is. It kind of is. Just because, I mean, whatever. We're not talking about ham- hamburgers right now anyway. It's supposed to be about comedy. Which is all subjective. Is just my opinion. You can have a different opinion if you want. That's what makes the world that we live in so great. You don't have to change my mind on everything that I think. And believe it or not, the world is not going to explode if me and you think different things. That's actually the more healthy thing to do. Because if we all thought the same way, what would be worth anything in the world it would be a terrible boring twilight zone ish type of world dude who wants to live who wants to live there you want to live in pleasantville go right ahead dude that's not that's not for me i need a little instability a little action in my life once in a while this dude just the way that he structures his bits they're, I wouldn't even say they're bits. It's almost just like he's, he's doing like a one man show kind of a thing. Like how John Linguizamo put out a few uh, quote unquote specials where he's basically up there for an hour or whatever it is and he's telling a story and he's getting laughs on things that I guess you could call punchlines. But they're really not, I think they're just awkward situations that some people can laugh at because we can picture ourselves being in those situations or we know somebody who talks like that or acts like that or we live that life and that's, that's why 
it's funny. Yeah. But that may be to us. You know, why? Yeah, I don't know. Some people may just think that it's fucking funny. I mean, I don't, I don't pretend to, I don't pretend to know or understand. I'm just saying that I guess it, it's a matter of what I was exposed to as far as comedy is concerned. Like, Dice is one of the first dudes, if not the first comic I ever heard. Uh-huh. That's a high bar to set, and you can argue he's filthy, he's a disgusting, whatever. The animal. Yeah, but he's doing a character, Wait, who? dummy. Andrew Dice Clay. Uh-huh. He doesn't walk around in his day to day life and act like that. It's a performance, stupid. I mean, well, probably not now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Soder, Okerson, Pinet, I think I mentioned already. Oh, Jesus. I picked a bad time to do this because I didn't, I didn't write any of this shit out, which is probably why I forgot about it because I wanted to actually put some time into illustrating a point here. And the differences between, if I can find them, if I can actually make this valid point, that there are, some things are stand up and some things aren't. And I'm just talking from a consumer aspect. There's probably a hundred comedians that would want to shoot me in the face and be like, dude, you're not a comic. You don't know the first thing and what you're talking about. You should just shut the fuck up. And laugh at what you laugh at and leave everyone else alone. Fine. I'm not going to argue with you. I mean, Jack Dunham is more of a of a traditional stand-up than Chris Gethard or John Linguizamo is. I mean, I know there's differences. He's got puppets, which make it easier for him to... I think the trail was around before stand up. I don't know. See that that would be puppetry. Oh look. Because I I'm, I'm not sure. I never I never thought to look it up. Not that I'm gonna get an actual answer. Like, did you just say <laughs> corona. It puts stand up for ventriloquist. This is the one thing that I can't stand about Google, what this does, is all that's coming up. There's no shit, so come on, bitch. Yeah, really. Okay, here we go. The only two dudes that come up are Jeff Dunham and a guy named Ron Lucas, born in, let's click on his Wikipedia, because I'm just going to assume that this is the first guy to do it. Grew up in El Paso, Texas in 1972. By 10, he could speak without moving his mouth. At 21, he began touring the country. (sighs) Okay, I was hired by Billy the Kid Clothing Company, which is a big, big in El Paso at the time. Hired me to tour the country with the Billy the Kid puppet. Contract was only for a year. Reinforced the dream of being in show business. In September 2004, he received a standing ovation on the Muscular Dystrophy Association telethon. And host Jerry Lewis said it doesn't get any better than that. See, I hate how they just did that. Because you just hit him with a double right there. You're using sick kids, and then you're name dropping on top of that. You're leaving out all the extra legwork that this dude had to do to get to that point. But it is what it is. So we'll say 2004. That seems really recent. I mean, I was expecting way, way older than that. But again, I'm only going off one person, so I'm going to have to do another search. Born in 1962, also from Texas, 
Jeff Dunham is. Years active, 1976 to the present. So, when did this asshole start? As of... That person... Began performing for audiences as a teenager at schools, churches, and Six Flags. Well, I didn't see him at Six Flags. Well, he was in Texas, that's why. He wasn't up here. Okay, he was voted most likely to succeed 1980, graduated high school, career obtaining within 10 years an appearance on The Tonight Show starring Johnny Carson. Holy shit. Who would have fucking thought? I mean, not that Jeff Dunham just fell out of the sky, but I wouldn't have thought that he was around when Johnny Carson was doing fucking television. All right. So, we're going back to the 80s, which means somebody had to do it earlier than that. We're going to have to do another search. As long as you're successful and doing well, it's great. It's when you're struggling and they try to wipe you out, then it's rough. Yeah. We were saying that before you came on, how hard it must have been at the very beginning before people knew who you were and, and what kind of, of comic you were. Yeah, well, you know, uh, to suddenly walk into a club and he's this guy insulting everybody. Well, it, well, I was really before my time, but to be very honest, because today I do the things that that are today and I was doing that 20 years ago and it's funny how people say uh, he, he says terrible things he wipes people out you know and all I do is laugh at ourselves and I think there's ways of some people saying gee uh, he said uh, some offbeat words or what have you and I think it's in the eyes of the beholder in the sense that uh, the best way I can des uh, describe what I do my father rest his soul and you were very close to your mother and I'm very close to my family too my dad rest his soul he was the kind of a man that put his arms around a woman and when he did it wasn't dirty and there were other guys that give a woman a hug, and right away at the party, your, your wife's looking over at the husband going, Charlie, get Al out of here, you know. <laughs> so it's the way you do something. Now, being on this show, like I, I tell Dick from the bottom of my heart, I never liked you. <laughs> <laughs> so you can't be serious. You're an annoying little guy. <laughs> That's right, type that hangs around the health club in the corner with the towel. Who was the first ventriloquist? Can't say that word now for some reason. Holy fucking creepy. That's a terrifying photo. It's a dude that looks like the husband from Liar Liar. Wow, that was a nice image. Deleted. Not Jim Carrey, the other guy. Him right there. With... A doll that looks like a cross between the saw the saw doll and Chucky. Christ. But anyway. Oh, and the, the little little lady one. Yeah. They made a movie about her now. Annabelle, I yeah. think. The first known guy was Louis Brabant. He was a valet to the French king in France in the 16th century. Henry King called King's Whispers. Okay, whatever. That's all. That's wild. So we're talking about the 17th century, whenever the fuck that is. Okay, so let's see who is the first stand-up. Maybe some people would say... That silent movie guy. Chaplin, I think his name is. Who's the first stand-up comic? Or it might have been Lenny Bruce. More recently. Stand-up comedy. Everything changed after the 19th, early 20th century. Let me just go into Wikipedia real fast. Stand up. Okay, that's not old. That's new. 
I know what stand up is. Oh, right, you know what? Let's let's go over the definition of what stand up comedy is. Comedic style in which a comedian performs in front of a live audience, usually speaking directly to them. The comic or the performer is commonly known as a comic, stand-up comedian, blah blah blah. Comedians give the illusion that they are dialoguing, but in actuality, they are monologuing. A grouping of humorous stories, jokes, and one-liners, typically called a shtick routine act or set. Some stand-up comedians use prop, music, or magic tricks to enhance their act. We're gonna uh, start with a really neat trick. Does somebody have a, like a five or a ten-dollar bill or anything? You have a five? Anyone? Just any kind of money at all? I know this usually, generally, just makes everybody a little antsy that we use your money for a trick. So if it's gonna bug you. We'll skip it because we have a lot of other shit we can do. <laughs> okay, let's look at some of the shit you just bought, shall we? <laughs> This first trick is called the mystery of the of the linking coat hangers, and as you can see, they're already linked, so that's going to save us lots of time. Stand-up comedy is stated to be the freest form of comedy writing that is regarded as a fictionalized extension of a person performing. I mean, I guess if you go by that, then they all are stand-ups, just very different. So they they put a picture of some broad Bridget Christine at a comedy festival in 2017, as if that's gonna fucking help me figure out who this first stand-up fucking comedian was. Assholes. Well, that's more like it. 1969. At least that's older. George Carlin was, I guess, one of the first in America. I don't know. This this seems really shaky. Look, man. I don't. Founders of modern American stand-up include. Moms, Mabley, Jack Benny, Bob Hope, George Burns, Fred Allen, Milton Berle, Frank Frey, all came from places that I'm not even going to try to pronounce. They spoke directly to the audiences as themselves in front of the curtain, performing in one Palace Theater in New York. So basically. That's where it goes, and then obviously it graduates to Alan King, Martin and Lewis, Don Rickles, Joan Rivers. Where I know who both of those people are. Carlin, Gregory Fox, or Dick Gregory rather, Red Fox, Bill Cosby, Richard Pryor. Well, I mean, say what you want about the scumbag that Bill Cosby is. He was a fucking. He was a what he did with stand-up comedy is unlike yeah, yeah. is unlike anything that anybody has done. Just his ability to just not give a fuck and just do what he I'm does. Sure you make it sound fast too. <laughs> like it, it, it was crazy. Seinfeld, Ellen, Whoopi Goldberg, Eddie Murphy. I mean, there's there's a lot of people here. Let's get rid of those three tabs. We'll open another one. I just put Chris in the fucking deal. American actor, comedian, and writer. I mean, dude, what the fuck do I know? Right? What? Business? Do I have talking about what is or what isn't comedy?、Uh, There's just shit that is funny to me, and some things I just I don't understand. But then again, dude, what fucking kills me is you know I'll bring up I'll bring up people. My problem is I like comedy. I don't know every dude. That has ever existed, obviously. 
But, I mean, pretty much everybody that I would think would be a household name, other people would know. And surprisingly, I mean, we've gotten to a point where if I say the names George Carlin and Richard Pryor to some people, they don't even know who the fuck they are. Which is crazy to me that that is even... Because if you don't know who those two dudes are, then you probably don't know who John Panette is. You don't know... Greg Giraldo, Lisa Lampanelli, Nick DiPaolo, you know, even Mario Cantone, Adam Ferrara. There's there's a lot of there's a lot of people, man. And it's not just excluded to men, obviously. I mean I mentioned Lisa and a couple other female comics. They're they are out there. Taylor Tomlinson's new special was pretty good. You don't know a, a lot of other comics that I can't think of off the top of my head right now because I'm bad at what I do but I mean dude those guys those guys were essential to at least American style comedy I don't know what all goes on in other places I don't pretend to know I don't try to keep up I just try to Stay informed on what's going on in America, which could ultimately lead to a whole separate conversation about female comedians and material and all kinds of shit. There, I don't, I don't like the idea that some people say that female comics are never funny. Like, dude, it's not. It's not that they're not funny, bro. It's just that they're, I think a lot of the material that is going to come from a woman's perspective is going to be understood by other fucking women. You know, when Dice is on stage uh, cracking fucking dick and ball jokes, talking about jerking off and getting laid, I don't think a lot of women are sitting in the crowd going, I totally get that. I understand exactly what that feels yeah, like. Like, well, I mean, obviously. No, you get it? Oh, yeah, yeah. Get hard. Well, yeah, but, you know. Ugh. That's a, that's a whole separate issue in, in and of itself. But I guess, I guess it just depends on where you're at. Like, I watched Ali Wong's first Netflix special. Thought it was funny enjoyed it the second one came out went to watch it and I turned it off halfway through not because I don't respect her or because she's not she's good at what she, it's not that she wasn't good at what she does it's just her material wasn't fucking connecting with me man I'll make the parallel not to not an Asian. Not or a woman because I don't understand Jokes about pregnancy. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm not gonna get pregnant. Well, yeah. I'm not unless gonna... I'm a fucking forward thinking gay transgender, if, if that's even a fucking terminology. And I think that if somebody blows a load in my ass, that I can pretend really hard and yeah. get pregnant. He's just aggravated. I won't ejaculate in his ass. <laughs> Yeah, see, that's, I just made it as offensive as possible, so yeah, go fuck yourself. How did you make it? Because somebody somewhere is, is pulling their hair out and punching the fucking air right now that I just put a bunch of those words together because they're 100% all of the time in the right, never say anything wrong and or confusing, and how dare anybody exist in the world who doesn't know that this and this term don't go together and that's called this and don't call me that and what I, dude shut the fuck up have you looked around have you looked the fuck around the world is falling to pieces and i got news for you honey the sky is bigger 
than what you think it is, and it's not just falling on your fucking head because somebody called you the wrong fucking thing. Here we go! I've been referred to as a hundred different fucking things. Bro, I just got stopped in the middle of the fucking street yesterday by a police officer for limping, bro. So don't come to me with your fucking sissy problems about somebody calling you something that, you know, is, is the wrong fucking thing. Maybe you wanted to... I, I don't know. I don't know what the terms are. Maybe you, maybe you're a fucking zur and they called you a sis. You know, whatever, whatever. Just cut people the fucking break, man. It's tough out here. But, but I don't, I don't care about any of that. What about the new thing? Yeah. I, I guess zers I've, and sis. I've heard zur, z's and zers are a thing apparently. I guess in in Canada, if I, I, I'm not learning a whole new. Dialogue. They're whatever they are, and they should be whatever they are, and enjoy it, and live their fucking life. Don't complicate mine. If you want to tell me that your name is Jennifer, yeah, you want to you want to say that your name is Jennifer? Fine, I will call you that. But that's where I'm gonna leave it. I don't want a whole fucking history lesson. And to be honest with you, if you're gonna be that fucking uppity about what the fuck name you're going to be called, we're probably not going to hang out anyway. Now, I know what you're thinking. Well, how would you like it if somebody walked up to you and said, hey, limptard, or stutterwalk, or the pirate leg, or or gimpy, or... F- <laughs> See what I mean? Pirate patch, whatever, whatever the fuck... Hey, one leg, thumper. Yeah, thumper, one... One leg, whatever tripod whatever you can think of to call me how would you feel if if somebody called you that hey water hey waterhead you know how how would you feel slow retarded moron dumbass whatever look if if that's how somebody's gonna address me they're gonna get checked because i have a motherfucking name and it's not snoo doggy dog it doesn't matter, as a matter of fact, what my fucking name is. But I'm not going to let you get away with saying some disrespectful shit to me like that. When you could just say... Hey, thug life. <laughs> yeah, or thug life. Well, that's a whole subgenre of names that you could call me. But see, there's a difference hey. between... <laughs> there's a difference between purposefully looking at somebody and going hey chicken, thighs, chicken, chicken, legs. chicken <laughs> legs yeah paraplegic legs chicken legs and these are all the stuff I said yeah but I'm trying to think like okay if if somebody was a dude wet noodle. and now they're a, and now they're a woman I must say if they were a dude now they're a man if they were a man and now they're a woman and they wanted to be called Ashley instead of Fred, right? Uh-huh. If I... Just let me know, I'll call you Ashley. If I know, but I'm saying if I purposefully walked up to this person with that information and said, hey, fuck you and right. your wannabe name, your name is fucking Fred and that's what I'm going to call you, that's disrespectful. That's different from not having the information beforehand or you just being a spoiled fucking pussy about it now i mean you could call me whatever you want we're gonna exchange words and i'm gonna put you in school and let you know what time it is because there is a way that you don't have to like me but you are gonna address me with respect god damn it and why is that everybody deserves respect that's true but don't go abusing it though so a lot of people go and abuse that shit, which is why you get these people that are like, well, fuck that whole thing over there. Whatever they are, I'm not getting involved. I'm not getting involved in it. You talk about minding your own business? Well, I mean, I would rather just mind my own business. I don't want to fucking be yelled at for not saying the right thing to somebody when I, I should have. But that's all complicated. Like, I don't have time 
in my life for that bullshit. I got enough of my own stuff going on. You heard all the fucking names that I just threw out. And that was off the top of our heads. I didn't even get a pen and paper to write down all the shit that I've been called over the, over the years. And that's only the stuff that I can remember. You can imagine the shit that I must have forgot. We're, <laughs> missed the cat <laughs> we're a long way away from where I started, which is comedy. Which The point is, though, I mean, look. Different. Well, we're not that far off of comedy. You keep on making the cat jump and making me giggle, so. <laughs> I mean, different shit for different people, I guess. I'm not. The whole point of what I wanted to go into was pointing out the differences between the styles of comedy. But I'm not. Like, I'm a comedy nerd. I'll watch a lot of it. I enjoy stand up because I like to be able to laugh at some shit to forget about problems for a few minutes. Like, oh, I didn't blow no kid in the sand pool. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. I mean I, and that's a it's comforting every once in a while to go I've had a lot of fucked up shit happen in my in to me in my life. Exactly. But at least never my booty hole. <laughs> mm, at least nobody ever pissed in my mouth in an apartment swimming pool. Yeah. I got that going for me. And um, there's, believe me, people that know me look at a hundred different scenarios in my life and they substitute that thing for a situation that has happened to me and say, thank Bob, I don't have to deal with any of that. That's just... That's just the way that the world is. And I guess that's it. I don't know. I don't really have... I have to be careful with how I do this now because the last time I fucked up, I pressed the wrong button and I cleared an entire thing. Which, I mean, accidents are going to happen. This is what you get when you record on a phone and not... On a microphone that is not that far away from where I'm currently sitting. I just did not want to get up, go in there, load up the computer, turn on all the programs, and then start to talk about this. Get completely derailed. Go on some other shit, I mean, which I did anyway, but it would have been worse. It's just, sometimes it's just easier for me to do it remotely because... At least it's here. I keep an eye on the time. Like, I know... And you also want to get back to your show. Yeah, I want to get back to finishing this. I got 24 minutes and 20 seconds in this show that I'm watching. And I'm sitting at 45 minutes right now. So I know that if I, if I were to get up from here, this would not be getting turned back on. At least not anytime soon. Or, and then we both would be up for hours. Yeah, which is no good. Especially because I have to I have to get up and go to the plug tomorrow. And try to get there before it rains. Get there and back before it rains. And try not to catch the goddamn coronavirus while I'm going. What did you say? Yeah, the Zika, the <laughs> Corona. You were in on your hiccup thing. You know, fucking got it. <laughs> uh, look what the fuck is going on. <laughs> You're alright. What about Zika, Dad? Yeah, I don't want it to get me. That was gross. Yeah, it was. Hopefully my phone picked that up. It sounded like somebody was playing with your cheek. You gotta put it to her chest. I was letting her check it out. I'm just gonna motherfucker, I don't wanna check it out. I want you to pet me. Yes, yeah, she does. You don't love me? And she's you a psychopath too. Me. Both of these animals are psychopaths. The cat and the dog, both of them. The dog won't go anywhere unless you're literally right next to her. She won't walk out the doorway unless she thinks that you're going 
as if we're going to shove her out the front door and close it behind her and be like, all right, fuck you, that's all. That's all, folks. That's all, folks. Yeah, <laughs> you don't live here no more. And then this fucking psychopath. Put it up. You can hear him purring away, probably. Mm. Mm, sound like a dildo. Yeah, well, that, that's one of the only decent noises that she makes. Everything else that comes out of her is fucking gross. Which is pretty much, I just I sit here is. all day and, <laughs> yeah, see, like, what even, what even is that? That one's not too bad either, but it's like she's trying to meow, lick her paw, and brush her I face see, at the same, at the time. same time. Like her teeth. Yeah. yeah. I think she, her mouth is all fucked up. Suspected it for years. It probably is. I think she got an underbite because her bottom one, bottom jaw comes out. A little bit more. More, yeah. I call it grandpa mouth. I did notice that. But I mean. Whatever. At least she lived. Um, by the way, you'll be seeing the... You'll be seeing the painting soon. I'm going to take... A bunch of pictures. The shit that was previously taken of what it used to look like. The sketches that were done on paper. In comparison to what it looks like. When it's quote-unquote finished and when I say finished I mean when she eventually has to just put it down because she can work on it for the next year and still not be satisfied with it but it's gotta be put down and she's gotta move on to the next day. No, I stop when they tell me to stop. That's how basically I work. Well, so there you have it. I mean, it's it's rough. It's real rough. To have to change up shit constantly. I was getting all frustrated with it today. I'm like, ugh, I could have started all over. Still didn't, but, you know. Well, we, the reason why I'm going to post it. To. The reason why I'm going to post it, too, is so that you could get other people's opinion on it to I'm see what they think a painter, yeah. well you're gonna look at it and you're gonna hate it always just like everything that i do including this right now i'm going to hate as soon as i'm done with it i don't want to fucking edit this and well, put I it together and how to paint, you know, where it, i don't want to think that it just shows you know. i don't want to upload this and then put it out into internet land to be like this is a thing that I did that you should all take time to listen to even though I hate it now I'm just going to put it out anyway it's basically what you're doing is you start it out you think it's all right and then the further in the process you get the more disgusted by it you are until eventually you just have to leave it alone while everybody else around you goes, no, it's it's all right. Mm -hmm. I like it. It's good. And you're going, no, no, it's, what, what the fuck are you talking about? You must have no sense of taste at all to it, like this because it looks like shit. I don't know how you can, or you're just saying that to be nice to me. Yeah, that's right. Uh, because really you don't want to be mean. But really, they they might they. That's because I have drawn shit on, really, like, you know, really bad or painted something, just to see what people would say, and you know, they're like, "Oh, that's so great," you know, to like. That's well, why I don't take compliments. It depends people. on who it's coming from, what their skill level is, because if they can draw and you draw anything that looks remotely decent, they're going to be like, oh, that's the greatest thing I've ever seen. Mm. Right? That's just the way it is. But that, it looks good. Mm. Ish. Just said, stop lying. Yeah, it would have looked better if, you don't mind, 100% honest opinion, 
It would have looked better if she would have said from the beginning that she wanted it colored and all that instead of saying at first she wanted it black and white or sketch, whatever. She wanted black and white, sketch, then color, then black and white. And then, you know, she just really liked the black and white. Yeah, and then she said, and I quote, I know it's difficult to bring a dead person back to life, but do the best that you can. Do you have any idea what a sentence like that says to, like, the, come on, man. I can't draw a fucking, do you know the amount of fucking pressure that it is to put on somebody, and maybe it comes with the territory, like, you know what you're asking for, and yet you you acknowledge it, but then at the same time, you change your mind a hundred times, and then you try to be picky. You can't have it both ways. It's either this would have, it would have, here's the point, is if you would have been able to do it the way you're doing it now, from the beginning, it would still have layers, but it would have looked better. Yeah. But it doesn't look bad now. From what it was to what it is now is a completely different yeah. picture. And the fact that it even looks as good as it does is a testament to the ability that you have. Whether you can see that or not, I can't. that's what it is. In my view and in other people's who have seen it. When I put the black and white one up on Instagram. At Laughing Birds Pod. There were people that were commenting on it. That I don't know. And saying like. Dude, you know this is. This is really great. You're very talented. I like your style. Your outlook is cool. You know shit like that. I don't know. I, don't, I think that my outlook is just due to. You know the shit that I have to work with. Yeah, well, the... Yeah, because I don't have massive art supplies. The big reveal is going to be... No, you're working with dollar store paints right now. Well, 50, 50 dollar store paints. Some of them are from the craft store. Still acrylic. Yeah, but it's the quality of the paint. But, I actually think the Dollar Tree ones are a lot better. Oh, shit. I guess it's over. Or no, it just did that to warn me. That just Sonic the Hedgehog scared the shit out of me. I thought I was drowning for a moment. And it, it hits 55 minutes and it says, it, the screen goes black. And it's like, heads up, the maximum recording time for segments is 60 minutes. Keep an eye on the clock. Well, thank you. Now that you just scared the shit out of me. And I don't even know, probably the last two minutes or whatever I said is probably not even coherent because I was panicking. That's a terrible thing to do. I like half of the shit that comes out of my mouth. I'm like, well, hey. I appreciate the fact that they gave me a heads up, but god damn, man. That was scary. If it, it's done that before, I must have never noticed it because I don't recall that ever happening. This will be a future podcast at some point. I got a couple of different things that I'm working on right now. The clean episode is in the editing process. Now is officially done and scheduled. Which I took the day off from. I still have to set up a live stream. I'm going to do that. I'll probably try to shoot for that in the beginning of next week. Or the middle of next week at some point to try to knock out the editing on the clean episode and whatever this is going to be. Just to put them up so I have them. We're sitting at April 11th right now. Or possibly further. This should have came out on the 25th. Possibly the week after that. I don't know. I know it's only, it's only March 12th. So I have plenty of time. But... I want that window. You never know what can happen. I could go to the plug tomorrow and you could get hit with coronavirus and never record another thing ever again. I get hit and killed by a car. Yeah, talking about Walgreens. I call it a plug because they're basically the drug dealers. 
you know, so that's, it's a, it's a term, I'm not going to an actual fucking drug street dealer, I'm going to a pharmacy, so, you know, for all the narcs and police officers that may be out there listening to what I'm saying, don't get your fucking hopes up, yeah, because that, that's not what it is, but alright, that's it, it's 58 minutes, it's 12.21 in the morning. I'm going to finish this fucking thing. I'm going to write something in this so I can save it, finish Marin's special, and then tomorrow is another day.